In this video, we're going to cover ZX Spectrum emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Even though the ZX Spectrum never made it big in the United States, its legacy has vastly exceeded that and it has become a well-known computing device of the 80s. Numerous game companies got their start because of the ZX Spectrum, including companies like Rare, which is honestly how I've grown to love the system so much is because of things like the Rare Replay, going back and discovering these older titles. The ZX Spectrum scene is also one that is very keen on preservation of everything about the system, and there are wonderful resources out there for you to legally obtain wealth of information about it and games. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it set up on Xbox Series X and S. Let's dive in. So to get started with ZX Spectrum emulation on Xbox Series X and S, make sure to install the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. If you haven't done so already, refer back to my How to Install RetroArch guide for instructions on how to do so. Next, you will need to source some ZX Spectrum games, and the World of Spectrum website is a great way to get a number of games that have been abandoned. This site has a wealth of knowledge ZX Spectrum related and just a great archive of games. That being said, they do not host copyrighted materials, so you can't get illegal download links through this website, which is one of the reasons why I like to show it off. But you can head up to their archive section, and click on the games list, and then you can navigate through their games list, and if it says available, that means you can download it. And it will even tell you the machine type that it needs to be ran on, which is pretty awesome. But once you have ZX Spectrum games source that you want to have, they could come in a variety of different formats. Shouldn't matter a whole lot, but just be aware of them. And now you just need to decide if you want to put these games onto a USB drive or onto the internal SSD of your Xbox. For my demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and put these on USB, so I'm just going to drag them right over. Now, just a quick note about ZX Spectrum emulation under Xbox Series X and S. You are able to emulate a number of different systems without the use of a BIOS file, so anything from Spectrum 48K to the Spectrum 16K, and all of these versions in between, you don't need a BIOS file for. But if you're interested in trying out the Pentagon 128K, 512K, 1024, or Scorpion 256K, you do need to source BIOS files, and they will go into your system folder inside a Fuse folder with the following names. I don't have any of these BIOS files, I don't have games that require these BIOS files, so that's as far as I'm going to cover it in this video. But once you have your games placed where you want them to be stored, we are ready to head over to the Xbox. Now back over on your Xbox, make sure your USB drive is in place if you happen to be using one, and get booted into RetroArch. And from here we're free to begin loading up ZX Spectrum content, so one method of doing so is to go to Load Content. If you have your games on the internal SSD, you would go to S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch Folder, Games Folder, Go to your ZX Spectrum Games folder, choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. If you're like me and have your game stored on USB, it will be listed under E. Find your ZX Spectrum Games folder. Choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. Now, I'm not personally a fan of this method, it's a little bit long-winded, so I like to make a game's playlist instead. So to do this, go to Import Content, then Manual Scan, Content Directory, navigate to where you have your ZX Spectrum Games stored, whether that be under E or S, mine are in E. Choose the folder and tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, press up on your D-pad to get to the S's quicker and we are looking for Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Default core, same thing, up on the D-pad to get to Sinclair and we are looking for ZX Spectrum Fuse. Make sure scan recursively is on if you happen to have your game separated into subfolders and if you have them compressed, make sure to have scan inside archives turned on. And once that's ready, start the scan. And now over on the left, we have a new ZX Spectrum playlist entry, complete with all of our games. And now to play a game, all we need to do is go down to it, press A, and tell it to run. Now for ZX Spectrum emulation, I wholeheartedly recommend hooking up a physical keyboard to your Xbox Series X and S to make your life a heck of a lot easier. Not every game supports controller input, and even if they do, some of them still require a keyboard to get through menus. But once you have a keyboard hooked up, you can press the scroll lock button on your keyboard to make it so the keyboard will only send commands to the core and not to the RetroArch front end, so you don't have to worry about activating any hotkeys by accident. And now before we can actually begin playing games, we do need to do a little bit of setup here in the ZX Spectrum emulator. Going into our RetroArch quick menu, scroll down to the controls tab. 
And the first thing we're going to do is go to port 3 controls and we're going to change this from Retropad to the Sinclair keyboard so that way our keyboard works. And under port 1 controls we can change this from Retropad to a number of different ZX Spectrum joysticks. Depending on the game you're playing, that is where you're going to choose which type of joystick you use. For Donkey Kong Jr. here, the Kempston joystick is the one that is required so that's the one I'm going to choose. And if you happen to be playing a multiplayer game you can do the same thing with port 2. But once you have these options set, I am now able to interact with my ZX Spectrum games. So I'm using my physical keyboard to choose what type of interface I'm using here with Donkey Kong. So I want to change over to a Kempston joystick so I can play with my controller. I can use the number two pad on the keyboard to change the number of players that are going to be playing. I can use the number four button to choose the music on or off. And then number three starts the game. But now we are able to enjoy our lineup of ZX Spectrum games. But now let's go ahead and cover some of the core options available within the ZX Spectrum emulator. So going into our RetroArt Quick menu, we can scroll down to Options, and our first option is to choose our ZX Spectrum model. So we can choose anything from the 48K down to that Scorpion 256K, but once again, anything from the Pentagon 128, 512, 1024, and Scorpion 256 need BIOS files. Next, you can hide the video border, so if you want to make it so your games are a little bit bigger on the screen, you can turn this option on. Leave tape auto load fast load on if you want to have faster load times for tape based games. Otherwise, they will take quite a while to load up. If you do happen to turn these options off, though, you can actually turn on the tape load sound effect, which is kind of a neat, authentic feel, I guess. It's pretty cool to see. Next up, you can choose your speaker types between a TV speaker, beeper, or unfiltered. You can also do some uh, stereo separation here, two different options to choose from. Next up, the option to disable the on-screen keyboard, transparency. Didn't really talk about this yet, so let's go ahead and do so now. But when you have a joystick selected in the control layout, you can press the back button key on your Xbox to activate an on-screen keyboard. So, useful if you don't have a physical keyboard to hook up. But you can disable or enable the transparency here. Next, time to release keys in milliseconds so you can make keys trigger faster or slower by choosing these options. Next, you can manually assign joypad mappings to specific keyboard buttons on the ZX Spectrum itself. It can be useful if you don't want to hook up a keyboard or use the on-screen keyboard, but for the most part I don't mess with these personally just because it's easier just to use a keyboard. But the options are there if you want them. That's going to do it as far as core options within the Fuse emulator are concerned. If you have options you want to save for some games but not others, you can go into Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. But that's going to do it as far as ZX Spectrum emulation is concerned on the Xbox Series X and S. Not overly complicated to get it set up, but definitely can be taken to the next level with a physical keyboard attached to your console. As always, if you happen to have any questions getting this one set up, feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on the channel. Content is continuously updated and a number of random things I like to do go up all the time. And we love having everyone along for the ride. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing update vids just like this to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current champions, you all are just such amazing rock stars. thank you for believing in what we do and helping us every step along the way. You all are amazing, thank you so much again. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.